Capturing the perfect pour shot, throw shot, or splash shot can be a magical moment. It's almost like art in a way. But if you're struggling to freeze motion in time and you're unsure as to why, well, this video is for you. What is up guys, welcome back to Raw Factory. My name is Jacob and in today's video, I'm gonna help you understand how to freeze motion with flash photography. I want you to forget about everything you know or you think you know about freezing motion with flash. All I wanna make clear right now is this. To freeze motion with flash, you need a speed light or strobe with a fast T.1 value. Well, what is a T.1 value? Ah, oh, I never thought you would ask. The T.1 value is the time it takes for a single burst of flash to turn on and off, on and off. Now, not all branded models have the same T.1 values. And to find your T.1 value for your specific branded model, jump onto Google, type in the branded model of your speed light or strobe, and put the words flash duration at the end of it. You should be able to find its T.1 values, which will help you to decide on what power output to place your speed light or strobe on to achieve and capture a specific motion. Now, the higher the number of the T.1 value, the better. The lower the number of the T.1 value, the not so great. Check out this chart, for example. Notice how the shot with the higher T.1 value, the more in focus the liquid is. Well, that is because the flash was able to turn on and off a lot quicker enabling us to freeze the motion of the liquid in the air. So let's put what I just taught you into practice. Let's take this shot for example, and let's try to recreate it. I have a sheet of A1 green paper stuck on a wall with blue tack. Some people call it glue tack. Now, as I've already taken this shot, I know that I need a higher T.1 value of 4,000 or above. Now, if I refer back to the chart that tells me all the T.1 values, it says that to achieve 4,000, I need to be on a power output of 132. So I set both my strobes to 132. And as a side note, it even says it on my LCD screen of my strobes. Not everyone has this, but my one does. Now my choice of modifiers for my strobes are just rectangular softboxes. As you might know, rectangular softboxes give you that nice strip on the glass, which I quite like. Next up, you need to adjust your camera settings to achieve a nice exposure for your image. This is what I've gone for. My shutter speed is at 1 60th. Yes, you might be thinking this is slow, but keep in mind it is not the shutter speed that freezes the motion, it is the speed of the flash that freezes the motion. My aperture is set to F16 because I want everything in focus. I want it to be tack sharp. And my ISO is set to 250. Now try not to go anywhere past 400 ISO because if you do, you're gonna to start to introduce noise and grain in the image, which doesn't look that great. You don't want to do that. Also, try to turn off any lights around the room, any lamps, any downlights, as this might affect your final image, especially when I'm shooting at 1 60th of a shutter speed. Now, all you got to do is take a test shot and see what your image is looking like. I think that is looking good. Now, if you've made it this far in the video, well done to you guys. You've got to get up, do a bit of stretch, do what you got to do, but this is very, very important. This part is important. Open your ears and listen. I'm going to manually focus the glass because I don't want my camera auto-focusing when I go to click the shutter. I want it to know exactly where the liquid's gonna be poured. So when I take the shot, instantly it takes the shot in complete perfect focus and happy days. So how do I do that? Well, this is what I do. I put a strip of white tape across the container that will catch the liquid. The piece of white tape will help the person pouring the drink know where to aim when they're pouring it. Okay, but how do I focus where that white strip of tape is? I mean, it's all the way down at the container, right? Well, that's right. But if you get the person who has the cup, who's gonna pour it, to hold their hand with the cup exactly in line of that white strip of tape, but raise the cup up higher in kind of the center of your image, you can then set the focus point onto the cup, turn off the autofocus now, take a test shot, and then tell them that they can move the cup anywhere they like, as long as when they go to pour it, that the liquid hits the white strip of tape. That's their job, to aim where the white strip of tape is and make the liquid hit that. That's how you'll know that your shot will be in focus. And it's time for the pour shot. Three, two, one, bam. Here is the final shot. Let's zoom in, look at that. Everything is in focus, exactly how I wanted it. 
Pretty cool, right? All right, before we end this video, let's do a quick recap. Let's refresh the mind. Your shutter speed does not freeze the motion. It is the speed of your flash turning on and off that freezes the motion. Not all pour shots, splash shots, or action shots are equal. They all have different speeds and require different T.1 values. Find your flash system's T.1 values by looking up the Brandon model on Google or in the manual guide under flash duration. Use a guide to help the person pouring the drink to know where the focus point has been set. Remember to place the focus at a specific point before pouring the drink and then turn off the auto focus. Well, that is all from me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please like and comment below to help others find this video. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And remember, guys, don't wait. Make something creative today. Catches.